Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Chester, Illinois. This wonderful little city happens to be the hometown of E.C. Seeger, who, among other things, was the inventor of one of the most famous cartoons of all time, Popeye the Sailor Man. So we're here to learn all about this awesome character. Tag along. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's To begin our voyage all about that famous sailor man, we're going to head into the one and only Spinach Can Collectibles Popeye Museum. Spinach Can Collectibles is kind of your one-stop shop for everything Popeye here in Chester. This also happens to be the headquarters for the Popeye picnic that happens every year and the official Popeye fan club. It goes without saying that they are very proud of the town's connection to the original creator of Popeye and have plenty of articles all over the walls all about him and his life. Elsie Chrysler Seeger, or E.C. Seeger, actually used to work in this very building where the museum is now located. This building used to be the Chester Opera House and the owner was actually one of the inspirations for the character Wimpy. But today, this historic building plays host to one of the greatest collections of Popeye memorabilia in the entire world. Now, Popeye himself was not the original star of the comic strip that he appeared in. The strip was called Thimble Theater, and Popeye was introduced on January 17, 1929. It didn't become the title until a few years later when the popularity of him won out and they knew this had to be the star. As a matter of fact, throughout the years, there was quite an extensive cast of characters that would show up in and around Popeye's life. But we'll get into that a little bit later. As a matter of fact, even Spinach, the legendary item that gives Popeye his strength, wasn't there in the very beginning. Originally, Popeye obtained his abilities by rubbing the head of the magical and very rare Wiffle Hen. I guess they decided it didn't make sense to have his powers rely on poultry. So, in 1932, it was officially made Spinach that gave Popeye his power. Seeger himself actually passed away in 1938. Luckily, other artists were there to step in and take over to help build the Popeye legacy that we're left with today. And legacy is certainly the right word. It's very rare that any fictional character reaches the level of heights like Popeye has. No matter where you go in the world, everybody knows about him. Right behind Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny, Popeye the Sailor Man and his magical spinach are beloved by people of all generations. Walking around the Spinach Can Collectibles Museum, it's easy to see that love and passion on display. Having been around for close to a hundred years now, there's been plenty of time for them to slap Popeye and all his friends' faces on countless memorabilia and toys. Just the sheer amount of things that have been collected here is mind-blowing. It's almost overwhelming trying to go through the collection and see everything. You can tell that the owners of this museum definitely do this out of love and passion for this legendary cartoon. Considering how long Popeye's been around, it's really interesting seeing the different years that all these items have come from. You can kind of track it from the early toys to the more recent ones, and it's like a little time capsule of the way things were made in relation to fictional characters and toys that went out to people. Even in things like buttons and pens, the changes in material, the inks that were used to print on there, just the whole style of it drastically changes as the decades go by. 
It's also really interesting to see the impact that a cartoon character can have on the real world. As a matter of fact, in 2004, the Empire State Building was lit up in spinach green in honor of Popeye's 75th birthday. And more about his link to spinach, U.S. spinach growers actually credit Popeye with a 33% increase in spinach consumption. It seems that as soon as people saw him chowing down on it, they figured they better give it a shot too, just in case. Somehow or another, this quirky cartoon character managed to stick around and really become part of pop culture. I think it's safe to say that Seeger never really had an idea of just how big his creation would become. He was only around for a few years of it, but I think if he could see what Popeye's become, he would be very pleased with the work that he's done. I think it also stands as a real testament that it doesn't matter where you come from. Chester, Illinois is just kind of a small town, nothing super special about it, though it's very nice, and yet this iconic creation managed to spring right out of the minds of one of their favorite sons. Seeger was just a young person with a dream and a vision. He literally drew his cartoons, sometimes even getting inspiration from the fellow citizens here in Chester. From that pen came this entire world that now everybody knows about. I love that places like spinach can collectibles exist to honor and document the amazing things that have come from here so that we never forget the power of what dreams can really accomplish. And hey, if you manage to stop by, make sure you pick up a couple comics along the way. It's always great to see some new Popeye stories. Let's explore Chester a little more. After learning that a few of the characters were actually inspired by real life people, we decided to come pay our respects to the final resting places of the real Popeye and Olive Oil. This is the grave of Dora Pascal, who was the inspiration for Olive Oil. She owned the general store here in Chester and dressed in a very similar fashion to what the character wears now and had that signature tall and skinny look. And not too far away, we find the grave of Frank Rocky Fiegel. He was another citizen of Chester and was known for being very strong and often getting into fights. It's easy to see how he inspired the one and only Popeye the Sailor Man. To further celebrate Chester's link with Popeye and all his friends, there are these amazing statues dotted all throughout the city. We're gonna go see how many of them we can find. We begin here with Bluto, Popeye's famous arch rival. These statues have become a yearly tradition here in Chester, and every year they unveil a new one. Bluto was unveiled in 2008, and is the one always trying to steal Popeye's girlfriend, Olive Oil. In 2012, they had Alice the Goon and her child. Alice started out as a villain, but through compassion, Popeye turned her into a close friend. In 2013, they built Poop Deck Pappy, who bears a very strong physical resemblance to his son, Popeye. Poop Deck took off to the sea soon after Popeye was born and then reunited with him years later. Things got royal in 2017 as the great King Blozo III had his statue firmly planted in town. He is the ruler of Spinachovia and often turns to Popeye for advice. 2014 brought with it Professor O.G. Wattasnozzle, who was a very quirky, crazy professor who actually didn't start out in Popeye's comics, but eventually found his way there to hang out with the old sailor. 2019 was a very interesting choice. This actually honors L.Z. Chrysler Seeger 
and his love of Sherlock Holmes. They put him in Sherlock's classic outfit and had many things in the background that allude to famous stories and threw it together as Sherlock Seeger. Popeye's true and most fearsome nemesis, the Sea Hag, showed up in 2010, and along with her came her faithful vulture, Bernard. Though Bluto is definitely Popeye's rival, the Sea Hag is one of his true enemies. However, not one of his enemies, Roughhouse the Chef arrived in 2015. He owns the local cafe, Roughhouse Cafe, which is a frequent place where Popeye and friends would hang out and grab a bite to eat. In 2018, Nana Oil showed up on the scene. This was the loving and elderly mother of olive oil. She also seemingly had a great fondness for bananas. Another member of Olive Oil's family showed up in 2009, her brother, Castor Oil, seen here with the very rare Whiffle Hen. He was an adventurer at heart, and eventually, Castor Oil ended up opening up his very own detective agency. Pretty cool. Popeye has a soft spot for dogs, and in 2019 they honored that with this statue that has three of his best four-legged friends. This statue was put here the same year that the Sherlock Seeger was unveiled. In 2016, they honored Popeye's four nephews, Pip-Eye, Pup-Eye, Poop-Eye, and Peep-Eye. Almost reminds me of Donald Duck's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And I gotta admit, I don't think I would appreciate it if my name was Poopeye. Joining his wife and son, Coal Oil was unveiled in 2011. This is, of course, the father of Olive Oil. A very serious, but a very loving man. The most recent statue, erected in 2021, is Harold Hamgravy, who many people don't know, but was written as the original fiancé of olive oil before Popeye came around. Then we have Tor, who was unveiled in 2020, and was a caveman brought to modern times, another one who started out as a nemesis of Popeye, but soon came around to being friends. We've mentioned her quite a few times. Here she is at last, olive oil, holding sweet pea, and petting Eugene the Jeep, which was a creature in the stories that actually the name Jeep comes from for the vehicles. Who knew? Only one statue to go. And where else could we end but at the statue of Popeye? Well, that's all the time we have for today, adventurers. Thanks for tagging along. If you enjoyed this voyage, make sure you hit the like button, leave us some comments, and of course subscribe so you can tag along on all of our next adventures. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.